is at the wheel. Joining me now is someone who doesn't mind doing some backseat driving when it comes to the GOP and some of this stuff. Bill Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard. So, Bill, uh, you know, I thought the Washington Post on Monday uh, had an interesting, I think it was Sunday or Monday, uh, had an interesting uh, way that they talked about the upcoming budget fights. They said, here you have John Boehner and President Obama, who couldn't be in, uh, shown less ability to lead these days in either one of their own parties. Yeah, this is, I've rarely seen a time when, in a sense, both parties seem to be in such disarray. Uh, the president's the president, so he probably ends up being held accountable if things don't go, go so well in the country, which is why, at the end of the day, Republicans don't feel that much pressure, in a way, to fix the situation. The activists feel they can, you know, disdain the leadership. The leadership feels it can, privately at least, uh, uh, ignore the activists. Uh, and, you know, they look out, they think 2014 looks okay, the polls look okay, they'll figure out something at the end of the day. So there hasn't, there's been an amazing, I'd say. There's no that, sense of urgency, right? Right. I mean, I'm, as you I'm, I'm a backseat driver, but I wish, you know what, if there were actually front seat drivers, I'd be a little bit relieved. But I'm a backseat driver in a car where neither, on either side of the car, you know, no one's got a steering wheel. So, so John Boehner's folks will say, and they've said to me, it's this me time and again. So, for instance, the strategy that they're apparently going to pursue on Friday, which is an attempt to, to right. defund the president's health care plan, is, which they have said isn't going to work, isn't, you know, don't, let's not try it. They're trying it because they say sometimes you have to show these guys that their strategy's a loser. I mean, I, the, the degree of disdain with which leadership staff speaks of most of the members or many of the members of the Republican conference is a little shocking to me, and I've been around town a while, and there's been a lot of Something private... condescending, things. isn't it? Oh, totally. Yeah. And the degree to which the activists just have contempt now for leadership and don't feel they really owe them much of anything, in a sense, they don't. They didn't get elected with leadership support, so they don't, the leadership doesn't do much for them, they think. Uh, it's not entirely a healthy situation, and I do think it's not to the situation. The leadership, decide, we just got to get through this. We'll be okay. Let's just not have a shutdown. Let's try to, you know, just... And by the way, we're fighting over continuing resolution. Right. We're not even fighting over right. a long-term budget. So leadership has had no strategy, basically. They, they come back in this week, last week, Eric Cantor. When they came back from their five-week break and wanted to report about what they learned from the grassroots, Eric Cantor shows up at a meeting and says, here's our complicated Rube Goldberg two-part super complex deal. And the members said, what? What? You didn't tell us about this? And now we come back and you spring it on us. So from members' point of view, leadership is showing no real serious leading. Uh, from leadership's point of view, the, the, the members aren't following. I think there were, there has been and still is in principle a third way. You could imagine targeting the most vulnerable parts of Obamacare, the individual mandate, I would say, unpopular, key to Obamacare, but a, a very unpopular part of it. And the president himself has suspended the employer mandate, so it makes a certain amount of sense to suspend for a year. Go for a year. Why mandate. didn't they go for this? And so you, instead of having shut that, defund everything, which isn't going to happen, the president won't accept it, Senator Reid won't let the Democratic Senate accept it, or do nothing, they were in between positions. But I think there's so much distrust, honestly, between leadership at this point and the activists. And, and in a way, both are swirling. Well, the activists are swirling for a they fight want with a leadership. Fight. Yeah. They, they kind they're of interested in well, who do they want to fight with, though? Do they want to fight with John Boehner or President Obama? John Boehner. Well, they want to win the fight within the Republican Party. They think they even if they even if it means they lose the larger short-term fight with the president. They don't think it really means that. They think they're not going to win the short-term fight with the president anyway. Boehner, this, here's and here's why I think they have a point. Has John Boehner articulated a way to win a short-term fight with the president? If John Boehner spent two through. months, yeah. if John Boehner spent two months saying, like, "Here's how we can make the limited progress we can make when we control one house of Congress," right. and the president's the president, having been reelected, I think a lot of the members, a lot of the more reasonable activists, at least, would have said, "Yeah, you know, maybe we." should give him a shot at this. He didn't do that. So the activists just want to go charging into the barricades. And All right, let me ask you this, because you're, you're somebody that does. If Dennis McDonough, White House Chief of Staff, called you today and just said, who do I deal with? Who would you tell him to? I mean, this is sort of the weird, you know, because I'm one of those who, you know, beats up the president sometimes. Hey, you guys got to go over there, have conversations. But for the life of me, who do you negotiate with on the House side? Well, Dennis McDonough and I did discuss, uh, <laughs> did talk during the Syria resolution when I was supporting the authorization of the use of force. And that did a lot of good, right? <laughs> they ended up with about 30 Republicans on the same side as Boehner, Cantor, and, and me and all that. There's also deep distrust of the president. So, I mean, there's distrust all around. I think they'll make, I think we'll make it through having said all that. I predict no government shutdown. Um, but I do think, I, I think... I go back to the, who do you, who, who should the White House be negotiating with? If Boehner can't speak for his rank and file, what do you do? 
Well, I think you let the House produce its legislation. To be fair to the House, it's not like the Democratic Senate's exactly produced. What have they produced? Why don't they pass a bill, right? I mean, you know, I can say, I mean, there's a little bit here in town. They did do a budget this time, though. And so did and the then, House. And then the House so did didn't the House. want to do a conference. Right, but it wouldn't have gone anywhere anyway. And look, the House has passed legislation. They passed the individual mandate. That's what I said. They passed the individual mandate with some Democratic votes. Add that to the CR. Send that to the Senate. That's a tougher vote. That's a tougher thing for Senate Democrats Pryor, to Lane, reject okay, than, okay. than the whole defunding of all of Obamacare. And that's the thing. All right. Bill Crystal, always uh, blunt with some of your advice to your uh, friends on Capitol Hill. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Good to see you here. Good to see you. The free agent. Good Bill to Crystal. be here. Good to All be right. Here.